Hello, I'm Dave Shadowitz, editor of Human Resource Executive Magazine, and I'm here with Stacy Harris, Vice President of Research and Analytics at Sierra Cedar. Stacy, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you asking me to come videotape again. Well, it's been 20 years now since we've launched Human Resource Executives HR Technology Conference. Yep. And you've been doing the survey for as long, correct? We have 20 years of data gathering. It's, it's pretty amazing when you look back at the amount of companies that we've talked to. 240 million, I think, is uh, employees that we've touched and something like 14,000 companies that we've touched over the years. So it's kind of crazy. Would you briefly share a little bit about how you go about conducting your research and the findings? Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people ask us about, you know, because we've done it for so long, it's a bit of a process, right? And when it ends, you start the next year. Every year we run the survey, usually in the spring. This year we're going to have to do a month early because you guys are running HR Technology Conference a month early. You guys are doing it in September next year. So we are going to launch this year in April 8th. Um, or next year in April 8th. And um, every year we make sure we adjust the questions just a little bit. We usually have somewhere in the range of 200 plus questions. Don't let that scare anybody. It is a, um, It covers all the areas of HR technology um, and we make sure that we're trying to get a sense of what's happening in the market. Um, and then we usually run the survey for a full month and then once it closes, um, we have um, Aaron Spencer, who is my colleague, and myself spend about a month cleaning the data, making sure we have really good responses, we validate information, we pull in secondary information on finances, um, and then once it's closed, we start analyzing the data. And that usually takes us about two months. So it's, it's a full year process to do it, but every year we find something interesting and new. So it's great. Well, so this year, what's the big aha that you came at, came out of the research? Well, you know, the big aha may not sound so big, but I thought it was quite fascinating. The big aha is that people are sort of happy with their HR technology. <laughs> um, I think that's all, you know, we always hear so many people grumble and it's, oh, it's not doing what I want and it doesn't quite work as well as we think it should. But when we ask organizations about whether or not it's actually meeting their business needs, about 75% of people now, that's 20% even more than last year, said that yes, it, it's meeting their business needs. Now that doesn't mean that they're not going to be buying or spending more. Actually, the budgets have stayed the same or gone up. They've particularly gone up for large organizations and they're staying the same for medium and small organizations, which went up last year, as you recall. Um, and so what I think is happening is that as organizations have gone through major transformations, uh, they're starting to now see the benefits of those. We're seeing the benefits of cloud technology, the benefits of new mobile technology, um, and it's starting to be Become something that really is a value proposition for organizations to their businesses. Um, so the next big shift is going to be around the edges, I think, of HR technology. You know, one of the findings in your study is that 17% uh, of the respondents have a strategy for integrating their HR applications, and I should say only 17%. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, how does that compare with prior years, and should the HR community be concerned about that? I think they should. So we've been asking this question about four years. It was one of the first questions I added when I when I came to the survey because um, having been in the space of um, helping organizations implement systems and previously being a buyer myself and a practitioner level, I knew how hard integrations were. They were the things that always tripped you up. And I was really surprised by how many people were just still integrating systems on a case-by-case -case basis. They would get a new technology and figure out how to integrate it at that point in time. Um, what we're finding is that organizations, I think, are starting to realize how important it is, but it takes a little bit of effort to put in place an integration strategy. It's one of these around the edges things that I was talking about. So what we're finding is that um, those organizations who have implemented an enterprise integration strategy for their technology that includes HR, those organizations are getting 21% higher business outcomes. It's one of the most um, important factors in our findings this year that this is more important in some cases than change management, than whether or not you've moved to the cloud, than whether or not you've implemented new or older technology. It's the integration. So that is a really important thing. And, and there's we've got some data in the report about how organizations are doing it. So, you know, where do you see companies or employers beefing up their technology spend? What, what's your data say about that? Yeah, the spending right now is 
um, it's almost a little bit of back to the future, although that was last year's theme, I know. But it, it definitely is right now the spending seems to be in the learning space and the recruiting space, which feels like we just went through that about 10 years ago where everybody was buying a new LMS. And I'm not sure that LMS is going to be the new learning model of the future, but there is um, about 25% of organizations are evaluating their current learning management systems at this point in time. Uh, we know that the recruiting organizations are about 20 to 22% of them are evaluating um, their different solutions because there's not one ATS that's being used. There's a lot of different solutions being used in the recruiting platform space. So um, that's where a lot of the investment is. The other place is in some cybersecurity and security issues. I know that seems like it's a... Um, a far away from us in HR sometimes, but it really hits home when, when we have breaches. Um, and then we also see that um, investments are being made in this engagement performance space, right? So again, those, those areas that aren't at the center any longer, but are on the edges that are making value propositions for brand new employees really important, getting people up to speed, those type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the same front, do you have any predictions on you know, tomorrow where that spend might be going that it may not be going to today. Any thoughts? Yeah. Or? You know, tomorrow's spend, I think, um, the artificial intelligence space is something that is a lot of hype right now, a lot of conversation. And only about 49% of organizations feel that there's going to be big value for them in the future out of artificial intelligence. But 70% of them feel there's going to be big value in predictive analytics. Um, uh, my sense is that you know if you're looking two years down the road or three years down the road, right now all the artificial intelligence machine learning tools are in their infancy. They're all learning, they're all gathering data. So what we're spending on is like benchmarking stuff and predictive little elements, right? What will happen is as all those things roll up, because there's sort of a, a um, a ladder of things that you have to fill up to get to good artificial intelligence. You have to have good benchmarking data. You have to have good predictive analytics. You have to have good algorithms. As those things get worked out, in the next three years, we'll start to really spend on what we would consider true artificial intelligence and machine learning. That's, I think, where the money is going to be down the road. And I think it's because we've got such good systems down in place that can actually utilize them.